So without wasting time, let's learn some tips and tricks today. In this video, I am going to discuss the perivascular and perineural approaches of ultrasound guided axillary brachial plexus block. In both the approaches, the arm is abducted and the elbow is flexed at 90 degrees. A high frequency linear transducer and 50 to 80 millimeter of 22 gauge short bevel ecogenic needle is needed to perform this block. The concentration and volume of local anesthetic depends on various factors including the duration of anesthesia or analgesia required. 3 to 5 mils of local anesthetic for each nerve is usually sufficient. I also use 4 to 8 milligrams of dexamethasone as an adjuvant. Before watching the block techniques, let's have a quick look at the relevant sono anatomy. The probe is placed in transverse orientation at the lateral border of the pectoralis major muscle or at the junction of the body and the arm. The pulsatile axillary artery is visualized and on easing the pressure of the transducer, the axillary veins are visualized. It can be single or multiple axillary veins. Here, the nerves or the terminal branches of the brachial plexus are located around the axillary artery. The median nerve is usually located at 9 to 12 o'clock position, the ulnar nerve in 1 to 2 o'clock position and the radial nerve around 5 or 6 o'clock position. So from the anatomical knowledge, this could be the median nerve, this one is the ulnar and this could be the radial nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve is usually located few centimeter away from the axillary artery in the substance of the coracobrachialis muscle or in between the facial plane of coracobrachialis and biceps brachii muscles. The musculocutaneous nerve appears as the hypoechoic triangular or oval shaped structure with hyperechoic borders as you can see here. Other than the neurovascular bundle, we can also identify the double layered conjoint tendon here formed by the tendons of latissimus dorsi muscle and the teres major muscle. This is visualized at the proximal level and if you go distally along the arm you will get the triceps muscle instead of latissimus dorsi or teres major. Here you can also see part of the humerus. All four nerves shows significant anatomical variation in the axillary region. The usual dictum is your next axillary brachial plexus block will not be similar to the current or the previous one. We may also find the medial cutaneous nerve of arm or medial cutaneous nerve of forearm near the axillary vessels in the superficial subcutaneous plane. Sometimes the muscular cutaneous nerve lies very close to the median nerve. With the proximal and distal scanning, we can easily identify the location of the muscular cutaneous nerve in such cases. In perivascular technique, the individual nerves are not targeted. Here, two injections are performed posterior and anterior to the artery. Whereas in perineural technique, the individual nerves are targeted and local anesthetic are deposited around the nerve. Please note, in both the cases, the musculocutaneous nerve is targeted separately. This block can be performed in either in-plane or out-of-plane technique. The musculocutaneous nerve is targeted first as most of the time it lies outside the plexus and away from the axillary artery. 5 to 7 mils of local anesthetic is deposited after negative aspiration. Following deposition of local anesthetic, it looks like a full moon in black sky. In perivascular approach, a single injection is performed at 6 o'clock position or double injection at 6 and 12 o'clock to the artery are performed. LA is deposited posterior to the artery first to avoid displacing our structure of interest deeper. The 12 o'clock position can be accessed from here or from here. Here we are not targeting any individual nerves just depositing local anesthetic anterior and posterior to the axillary artery. In perineural technique, as you can see here, the individual nerves are targeted. Radial nerve is targeted first. As you can see, it is being lifted up. And then the median and the ulnar nerve. The acoustic enhancement artifact posterior to the axillary artery is often misinterpreted as the radial nerve. Use of nerve stimulation is highly recommended here 
to identify the individual nerves as well as to avoid the intraneural injection. Both techniques result in comparable success rates according to the randomized control trials. The number of needle passes is less in perivascular technique. 20 ml of local anesthetic is adequate for a successful block. The axillary area is highly vascular. Never forget to use the color Doppler to identify and locate the blood vessels around the brachial plexus. Can you tell the difference between these two photographs? They are the same, except one is with compression and another is without compression. During performance of the axillary brachial plexus block, try to keep the pressure over the probe as minimum as possible so that the veins remain open. If the veins are compressed like this, if your needle tip is inside any vascular structure, on aspiration you may not get any blood because of the pressure over the veins. Frequent aspiration and slow injection are two important factors to decrease the risk of IV injection and subsequent local anesthetic systemic toxicity. If no spread is seen on ultrasound image despite local anesthetic injection, the tip of the needle may be located inside a vein. Immediately stop the injection, withdraw the needle and reposition. That's all for today guys. If you are enjoying my videos, please let me know in the comment section. Catch you in the next video. Until then, keep blocking, keep rocking.